Great. Let's begin now with item three. Director. We will now begin the staff presentation. Good morning, Chairman Barner and Commissioners. My name is Rachel Linda Brecker for Planning, Planning and Development, and Development Services. Services. I will be, I will presenting, will be presenting on item number three, three, the CA50 Shelter, Shelter Valley Wireless, Wireless Telecommunication, Telecommunication Facility, Facility Major Use, use permit. permit. The department, the department is, before is before you today. You today. Um, please wait one moment. We're having a technical difficulty with our presentation. Um, commissioners, could you please mute your um, systems if you are not already? Okay, recommending approval of this project. The site, outlined in yellow, is within the Desert Community Plan area and is located two and a half miles south of State Route 78 at the corner of Great Southern Overland Stage Route and Shooting Iron Trail, both public roads. The surrounding land uses to the north, east, and west are primarily single-family residential uses, and to the south are civil uses, including the Shelter Valley Citizens Corporation Assembly Hall and the Shelter Valley Volunteer Fire Department. The facility is proposed to serve motorists and residents along Great Southern Overland Stage Route up to State Route 78 and the surrounding area. The subject property owned by the Shelter Valley Citizens Corporation is a vacant 1.1 acre site with access from Shooting Iron Trail. The proposed wireless telecommunication facility consisting of an 80 foot tall faux water tank, a nine foot tall concrete masonry unit block wall enclosure shown here by the red star will be located approximately 300 feet north of the nearest residence. In 2010, a major use permit was submitted by Mobile Light LLC for the construction, operation, and maintenance of a wireless telecommunication facility on the subject parcel. The project consisted of a multi-carrier 45-foot tall full water tank with antennas mounted within the tank, two equipment buildings, one backup generator, and a nine foot tall concrete masonry unit block wall equipment enclosure. On November 4th, 2011, the Planning Commission reviewed and approved the proposed project by a vote of 6-0, with one commissioner absent. The project was then appealed to the Board of Supervisors due to concerns regarding potential impacts on community character, wildlife, and property values. The concerns were analyzed and a response to the appeal was presented to the Board of Supervisors on January 25, 2012. The Board denied the appeal and approved the project. The approved 45-foot tall full water tank was never constructed and the permit has since expired. The current applicant, IntelliSites, requests a major use permit to construct, operate, and maintain a wireless telecommunication facility consisting of an 80-foot tall full water tank with up to 24 panel antennas mounted on the inside and one microwave dish and four GPS antennas mounted on the outside. In addition, a six-foot very high frequency antenna is proposed to top the full water tank for use by CAL FIRE's emergency services network. The facility is proposed to house up to three carriers two within the full water tank and one mounted to the legs of the tower and screened behind a shroud. The third carrier will be required to process a modification prior to the installation of their antennas on the legs of the full water tank. The applicant has secured AT&T Mobility as one of the carriers and is working to secure the other two. The equipment associated with the proposed facility, including cables, batteries, electrical panels, and a standby generator, will be located within a 60 foot by 60 foot area and enclosed within a nine foot tall concrete masonry unit block wall. This photo simulation shows the view of the wireless facility when looking south from Great Southern Overland Stage Route. This photo simulation looking southwest from Buckboard Trail, approximately 800 feet away from the site, illustrates that the line, form, and color of the facility would be largely consistent with other elements that make up the visual setting of the area. 
Water tanks are common features seen throughout the area because surrounding residents use well water. The applicant focused on existing raised water tanks nearby for the design of the facility. The facility's design reflects the shape and rustic color scheme of the existing water tanks and blends with the community character of the surrounding area, even though it stands higher than nearby structures and water tanks. The geographic service area maps illustrate coverage in the area with and without the proposed wireless telecommunication facility. The geographic service area maps demonstrate that the proposed facility will fill a significant coverage gap in the area and provide improved service to motorists and residents, as well as further connectivity for CAL FIRE emergency services. As demonstrated in these coverage maps, the 80-foot height is necessary to provide adequate coverage along Great Southern Overland Stage Route and to allow for adequate co-location opportunities for AT&T and two other carriers. The coverage maps here show that a lower height would not fulfill the intended coverage objective for the carriers and would likely result in the need for additional towers in the area. During project processing, a total of five public comments were received. Four were in support of the project and one in opposition. In addition to the five public comments, a petition recommending approval of the proposed facility was received, which included a total of 20 signatures of surrounding residents. Comments in favor of the proposed facility noted the current lack of coverage in the area, the need for service for everyday use by Shelter Valley residents and motorists, the benefit of cell service in the event of an emergency, and that the cell tower had been long awaited and long requested. One public comment in opposition expressed concerns relating to health impacts, property values, impacts of viewshed, and the proximity to residents and the Shelter Valley Volunteer Fire Department helipad. The county is prohibited from regulating the placement, construction, and modification of wireless facilities based on the alleged environmental impacts of radio frequency emissions and is not required to consider property values when processing discretionary projects. As previously discussed, staff has determined that while the proposed facility is taller than most structures nearby, the design of the facility is compatible with the community character and will not have a negative impact on the surrounding viewshed. Finally, regarding the proximity concerns, the proposed facility meets all required setbacks and is approximately 300 feet from the nearest residence. The County Fire Authority and CAL FIRE did not have any concerns with the proximity to the nearby emergency helipad and the proposed facility along with the associated CAL FIRE antenna will improve emergency communications within the community. The project is located within the desert sub-regional area which does not have an adopted community plan and or an associated community planning or sponsor group. However, the Shelter Valley Citizens Corporation, which owns the site and whose gathering space is located adjacent, held a meeting on March 6, 2020 to discuss the project with the community of Shelter Valley. This meeting resulted in a petition of 20 residents signing to recommend approval of the proposed facility. Because the project complies with the relevant codes and regulations has been determined to be exempt from CEQA and the required findings can be made, staff recommends the Commission approve the project as detailed in the staff report. This concludes our presentation and staff is available, is available for any for questions. Any questions. At, at this time, uh, commissioners, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Commissioner Woods as one of the three carriers is at and so I'm, I'm not going to participate. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, commissioners, uh, do you have any questions of staff relative to the uh, staff report? Yeah, I do. Commissioner Beck? Um, so in the coverage um, map that you showed in the service area, um, does that map reflect the co-location of the other carriers, uh, potential future carriers, or is that just for this one? Commissioner Beck, through the chair, I'm going to have the project manager respond to the question. Thank you. 
Commissioner, back to the chair. This is Rachel. Um, those coverage maps are for AT&T, so the initial uh, carrier that will be proposed on the site. But, but this site, I, if I heard correctly, it's there's going to be co-location of probably, it sounds like, three carriers. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. And, and so does that map uh, reflect the coverage that will be provided when all three carriers are on there or just the one? Just the one. If you look at the lower heights, those would be the proposed coverage for the additional carriers located below AT&T and, on this and facility. So, oh, I, I, I see. So that is that service area map. Sorry if I'm missing a point here. That service area map does reflect all three service providers. It could potentially. The 80-foot height is specifically for the AT&T because that will be the highest um, carrier on the site. The ones below would be located lower, uh, and therefore potentially the 60-foot height would be at the next antenna level. I'm not sure exactly where the antennas will be proposed on the facility itself. That happens once the carriers um, agree to be located on the site. So... Um... I'm going to school on this a little, so thanks for your patience. So, so uh, can all three carriers go to the near the maximum height, or is there a conflict uh, with the distance between the um, carriers' infrastructure? Approximately ten foot separation. So, w if if this were approved. Wouldn't the other carriers just move up the water tank higher and provide more coverage? Very basic question. Rachel, can I chime in? Commissioner, back to the chair. If it's okay with you, we'd have the applicant respond to that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll read uh, my question. If, if, if this project is approved and this, this height is approved, then there will be the potential for greater coverage given that it's a co-location site. If that is more or less a, a, a correct premise, then will the other carriers kind of move up the water tank to provide greater coverage? No, sir. We've actually uh, calculated that the second carrier will go at approximately 70 feet and the third carrier will go at approximately 60 feet. Okay, that makes sense. And so then my initial question remains, the, the coverage map that we're looking at, is that reflective of that eventual situation with those other carriers moving to those locations? No, it does not. But the okay. uh, table on, on page four of the uh, project description shows the uh, coverage at 60 feet, which is approximately 25% 25, 25 less than the maps showing at 80 feet. So the coverage drops off okay. about 25% at 60 feet. Okay, but I, I guess I'm just trying to picture some years from now or months or whatever that the coverage will be greater uh, if those other co-location carriers move up the water tank. Is that is that a correct statement? We're not anticipating them moving up. We're anticipating them going below at 70 feet and 60 feet. Okay, never mind. I'm good enough. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a, you know, the, the geography on that pole, there's, they have to have separation. Well, I know, I know, right. but if they're lower than... If they're lower than their eventual location now. Yeah, they get yeah. Okay, I, I'm, I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Well, All right, are there any other comments? Yeah, I have a comment. I think you're muted, Commissioner Siler. Okay, got it. Uh, following on what Commissioner Beck was saying, I, I noted that... Uh, the original plan was for a 60-foot uh, antenna, 
and that was passed uh, with obviously adequate coverage for whomever it could have been AT and T or one of the others. Um, and so a 60 foot height even would seem to be adequate coverage, even though what I just heard of a 25 percent reduction, uh, that doesn't mean it's it's inadequate. It, it perhaps is not uh, optimal. But what I'm understanding here is that by having this one single tower, there won't be additional towers required in the area. And that's what I heard our uh, uh, the project manager state. Is that correct, uh, Rachel? Commissioner Saylor, through the chair, that is correct. With the ability to co-locate up to three carriers, there's the potential for less towers to be necessary within the Shelter Valley community. Okay. All right. So, uh, copy the word potential, but that's about as good as we can get right now for the community. I go ahead. All right. Any other comments? Seeing none, the chair may entertain a motion. Um, chair, we, we uh, have uh, public speakers on this item. Oh, we do? Yes, we do. I apologize. So if there are no other questions from the commission, we can call on the first public speaker, Jessica. Let's open public testimony then. Okay. Caller with a phone number ending 0547, please press star 6 to unmute your line. State your name for the record and begin your comment. You will have three minutes. 0547. Speaker, if you wish to address the Planning Commission, please unmute your device and um, speak. Zero 05, thank you. Please proceed. Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, wonderful. I've never done one of these kind of calls before. Hey, um, I've been a board member in Shelter Valley and a resident since 2008. Um, I'm in opposition of putting the tower uh, uh, so close to the, our community center, our building, our church building, and our library and kids club. And uh, it's, uh, it seems to me it was originally planned to be lower elevation and and there's other property all over that desert area that they could put that tower in. It doesn't necessarily have to be there. We do have people who are ready that, that are in view of that, a little over 300 feet, and it will take away their um, scenic view. And I know that they're concerned about that because they have children there. And that's our big concern is children right now. They use the kids' club and we use the library. and They have this extra... Uh, uh, a Wi-Fi thing or a five-star thing. It just, it just seems too much. I have a cheap $25 a month service, and I'm getting cell phone coverage out there. So I don't understand. You know, at one time we didn't get it, but now we're getting it because uh, they've improved the area. Uh, so we're getting it off of the, maybe off of Julian or we're getting it from somewhere else. But the service is coming through, so I'm in opposition of this, and I know that others are too. I think that's uh, uh, that's my main thing. Is it's going to be upset uh, some people's views and their property value. Also, uh, it's too close. We feel at this time to the kid center, and we're having more parking lot uh, stuff going on out there. So we need to have that area available for people because we have to do outside church service, and we have the library there and the community center. Okay. Thank you very Anything else? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you. Thank you. God bless you guys. God bless you all. Moving to the next caller with a phone number ending 0840. Please press star 6 to unmute your line. State your name for the record and begin your comment. Hi. My name is Lisa Anderson, and I'm the past president of the Shelter Valley Citizens Corporation. I care about all the people of this small town, including the people who live close to this cell tower site. This unsightly 24-panel microwave tower would be located in a non-preferred residential zone next to people's homes. People want cell reception, so let's find a way to place this tower outside of town where it won't ruin the scenic views for people who have lived here for decades. 
These people know that it will be almost impossible to sell their homes close to an 80-foot cell tower that ruins the view shed. The original one planned was 45 feet, not 60. This site is located 300 feet from where children live and play and even closer to community gathering areas. Certainly, we can quickly find an alternate site for this tower that will not impact those who live nearby. Ten years ago, more than 25 people here protested a cell tower that was to be placed near their homes. Why are we still facing the same dilemma today when there is so much open land around us? If this tower is built, I will encourage community members to participate in a simple study to measure before and after levels of their critical hormones, such as melatonin. This will clearly illustrate that cell towers are geometrically more powerful the closer you get to them and geometrically decrease necessary hormone levels the closer you are to the electromagnetic source. Many people here already receive cell reception, so let's find a way to build this tower away from people's homes and improve cell service. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. And moving to the next speaker with a phone number ending 2855, please press star 6 to unmute your line, state your name for the record, and begin your comment. 2855. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We can hear Hello. you. We can okay. hear you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, my name is Adrian Walker. And first, I would like to say that not one person contacted us to see if and how this would affect us. We live right up, second house up, up kicking horse. And my view is the firehouse and right there. And um, the only information that I got on this came from um, our, a resident who lives here. Uh, I wasn't available. On, apparently, there was a meeting on March 6th, and I had no idea on it. Plus, it was my birthday. <laughs> anyway, for 30 years, we've enjoyed our view. Um, we've, we sit on our deck and have our morning coffee, and we look at the stars. And not to mention our view from our living room, dining room, picture window. So if this thing goes in, my whole view is going to be this giant water tower inside and out. And there's not one water tower out here that is that size. And I'm just really concerned because it's, you know... I, I'm 70. The cost of moving is just out of the question. And to where? I mean, I, I have really nice amenities here. So it's just very upsetting and very depressing. And um, I just kind of wanted to put my two cents in there. And um, I, I just, it just kind of blows my mind that they think that this thing would be really neat out here. I don't have a cell phone. I don't care if I have a cell phone. My landline works perfect. Anyway, just wanted to put my two cents in, and thank you very much for taking my call. Thank you. Thank you for calling me. Yes, and that concludes the um, members of the public who have called in wishing to speak on this item. All right. Um, if there are other speakers, we'll close public comment. And uh, gentlemen, since I drive this area so often uh, to and from Borrego Springs, I can tell you that the cell phone service there needs to be greatly improved. We also have a petition from many members of the community and letters and support. So I'm going to move staff recommendation. Do I hear a second? So this is Palinger, I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded uh, by Commissioner Edwards and Commissioner Palinger for staff recommendation. Uh, any further discussion? Yeah, me. Michael. Um, 
So could staff uh, quickly summarize the um, analysis, the alternative location analysis that was part of the application? Yes, Commissioner, back through the chair. Um, the closest preferred zone is 8.75 miles away. Um, there are no preferred locations within the coverage objectives, and there are no existing wireless facilities within two miles of the proposed site. Uh, the Shelter Valley Fire Station, Shelter Valley Community Center, and Hunt Sky Ranch Airport are the only three properties within the search ring that do not have a residential use. Um, and the applicant selected Shelter Valley Community Center because they owned the adjacent vacant site, which provided the space to meet the required setbacks for the facility. Coverage and maps. So those, uh, go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't want to interrupt. Go ahead. Okay. Um, coverage maps were provided to show that the shift in location, both north and south of the proposed site, would significantly reduce the coverage area and did not meet their coverage objectives. So, so those three alternative locations, the airport and the other two that you mentioned, um, those were looked at and they do not provide the same coverage? Is that what I heard you say? Correct. And they are also zoned the same as the surrounding um, area, which is general rural. Well, Hi, was... um, this is Paula Poole. I, I, I seeing if I could call wait, in. Wait a minute. Ma'am, you're not being recognized uh -huh. here. Thank you. Yes, the, okay. through the chair, I just want to remind the public that the public testimony has been closed on this item. Thank you. So so just to clarify my question, I, I, I understand that the applicant owns the adjacent property and that's advantageous and so on. And I just want to clarify in my mind that those other locations that you identified are um, less than adequate to provide the coverage. Is that a correct statement? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, chair, Any further comments? Chair, if I could, the um, speaker who just um, addressed the commission, um, we'd like to ask her uh, who she is just to identify herself. Um, she may be a property owner and the planning commission may or may not wish to uh, ask questions. So if, if you would oblige us, we would ask who she is. Sure, absolutely. Okay, Ms. Paula Poole, I see that you have joined the call again. Would you please press star six uh, to unmute your phone and then identify um, yourself and, and your association with this project for the commissioners? I am on the SBCC board in Shelter Valley, and we have been in favor of this project. Um, I went been to the planning meetings. I also uh, called in for the rehearsal and I did not get to present my opinion. You, you got three calls from the opposition, and there's only four people opposing this project. Um, Chair, um, you, you may... Director, I don't have a problem reopening public testimony and give this individual three minutes, and then we can close public testimony. Okay, thank you. Okay, my apologies, Ms. Poole. Please proceed. Hi, this is Paula. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, yes, please go okay. ahead. So I'm going to mention my my um, my pro feelings for this project. Um, I'm a secretary on the Shelter Valley Citizens Corporation board. Residents voted in favor of the cell tower. Over 20 votes were in favor and two were opposing. You've got calls from three people here, and I just wanted you to hear the pro side. A petition was also sent around that was in favor that was submitted for safety concerns. There will be a portion of the tower reserved for our CAL FIRE firefighters, which is very important since we are in a fire-prone area. Since we may be online in the fall due to coronavirus, it will be important for students to have better Internet. And since our students have been designated as students in need of better service by the local school district, we have been working towards getting a tower in Shelter Valley for many years. I have been on the SBCC board since 2013, and we have been discussing this 
and have been making efforts towards this goal. My main concern is safety, but a better signal should help us all. And that's about what I need to say. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for calling in. Okay. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I have a comment. Oh, okay. Uh, Can we Brian, pull up and, uh, so Commissioner Do you want Siler? me to un unmute it or, or mute it? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so she's unmuted, and she picked up on something that I was going to comment on. <clears throat> um, a cell phone tower isn't just for cell phones. It also deals with Internet. And even though you may have cell phone coverage that's all right, it won't be able, very possibly won't be able to handle the high-speed Internet traffic that pretty much everybody lives and breathes, breathes by today. Um, and I was also going to note that, in our handouts, uh, there were 20 residents that did approve this project. Uh, and again, the speaker just uh, sort of brought that out. Uh, and I do stand corrected, by the way. Uh, I believe it was Ms. Uh, Anderson, Ms. Mrs. Anderson, uh, brought up that the original tower was a, a 45-footer, not a 60-footer, and that was approved. But uh, clearly that would seem to be a little too low these days. It was not built. Don't know why. Uh, very possibly the coverage wasn't was inadequate. And uh, had it been built, we'd be talking about a second and possibly a third tower uh, in that area. So uh, it does seem like a good project, um, and uh, I would certainly uh, be for it. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? If, if not. Um, I'm going to call for the vote, Madam Secretary. Okay, please wait for your name to be called to vote. Commissioner Seiler? Yes. Commissioner Pallinger? Yes. Commissioner Edwards? Yes. Commissioner Beck? Yes. And Commissioner Woods? Yes. Okay, and let the record show that Commissioner Barnhart has abstained. And the vote passes. <laughs>